Hi, and welcome to Academic Compliance Academy. In this video, I'm going to talk about CSR and compliance, dynamic compliance, that is. So the aim of CSR is that a company or firm acts in favor of society, or as Thompson and Conyon define CSR, the way in which firms seek to voluntarily align the interest of owners and other stakeholders with the long-term best interest of society. So there's some kind of alignment here between expectations or society's interest at least, and firm behavior. That rings a bell when we talk about compliance. So let's dive just a bit deeper into CSR. CSR has two main objectives. It has to create social value and it has to be voluntary. Of course, you cannot say you have a CSR strategy that actually decreases the social value because it has to be in the interest of society, hence creating social value. The second element of the voluntary engagement is typically what will be criticized in media because is anything voluntary when you come to a company behavior? Would they ever do anything without earning the buck on it? Well, let's, let's look at some approaches to CSR. So Tirol and Benabou has kind of typed out three kinds of approach to CSR that you could take. There is the classic win-win situation. So that is when an CSR engagement actually pays off for both parties. That could be an example of consumers and producers or uh, sellers of fair trade products. So no one forced anyone to have a fair trade profile. And typically what they will experience is that consumers actually engage in that CSR decision of fair trade by buying their products. So that is like a, just a simple example of this win-win situation. A second approach to CSR by Tirol and Benabou is the external philanthropic view. Here I put in stakeholders. So that is when society has some kind of demand of corporate behavior. In the green transition in, in Europe right now, this could be an example of this external pressure of philanthropic uh, expectations. So that is something that comes from the external stakeholders, society's expectations that companies should engage in this. And if they don't, stakeholders, investors will, yeah, they will re retract from that company. So it's kind of an expectation that also it can be a win-win situation, but it comes from externally, uh, some expectations. Then we have the last approach, and that is sometimes really impressive. And we've seen uh, some cases lately of management having the philanthropic view. So this is when managers, CS, uh, CEOs, executive board, some people with power or ownership actually takes a stand and has some philanthropic view themselves. So they need to engage. We see it typically with the uh, establishment of foundations there there's a pure philanthropic view there's something that the owners want to get out of uh, there's a csr strategy that they want to put out there in the world so there are different approach to csr of course it's not always good and if you look into the media picture companies will sometimes be criticized because is there actually a philanthropic view because you still have to earn money. Well, sometimes it can be a win-win situation and sometimes it's also a profile of that company that you choose that some of your profits need to go into areas that are not necessarily profit-making or stakeholders, but it might be in good for society. That really puts out 
a feeling or an insight to the essence of the company, the aim of the company, which is always relevant when we talk about compliance. Because if you put out an agenda of, let's say, being green, then if you do not use any of your profits or any of your company engagement in any sense on this green transitioning, you would not comply to your own values, your own aim, your own core of your company and not your CSR profile, if that is a part of your CSR engagement. So here, compliance and CSR really actually fit each other very well. Another point is that CSR actually changed the view in terms of, if we look back at some of the other um, areas we've been covering, corporate, um, corporate governance, risk management, they all have an internal view, which means that we look at the whole world, the picture, we do everything in light of the company. CSR, because it relates to the external environment, it relates to society, CSR actually has an internal and an external view. So I put out these two examples, just questions that represent how this internal and external view should be considered. So internal, how do we internally act to be in line with our CSR pro, uh, policy, considering our stakeholders and be profiting from it or not profiting? External, how do we secure the social value of external preferences to increase even if it is not always in our favor? So there's some alignment here, as we also see in dynamic compliance, where we have internal and external views when we talk about CSR. So how do we engage in CSR and do we have any regulations? We do have regulations in the EU, especially considering uh, concerning large companies, but we don't have requirements directly that everyone should like put in a certain engagement in CSR because then it would not be voluntary. So there's something about the concept here going against hard regulation. What we do regulate is that you should disclose your CSR engagement, which means that you should say if you have any engagement, you should disclose it in your annual report to any stakeholders so they might evaluate your efforts. In that sense, you can say, okay, how is the strategy aligned with the actual CSR engagement? When we read the annual report, can we say something about the engagement that this company has towards society and CSR? So you must disclose certain information, but there's no hard demand on having CSR, um, a specific CSR commitment. So, because we don't have hard regulation, because it's kind of soft law regulated, then of course there will be the element of enforceability that might be hard because we cannot demand it, then we cannot enforce it, but we can only say disclosure. And the way you disclose it, is you need to do this comply and explain. You need to say, okay, we comply with this strategy, how do we do it, or we do not comply right now. So it is on a voluntary engagement and that does tend to go to the tick the box exercise, where we say, do we have it or do we not? And it all depends on which trends are out. We have seen it through the whole green transitioning now in Europe, that suddenly a lot of companies had a green agenda that they disclosed, even though they never disclosed it before. And that kind of falls short because, of course, maybe they didn't focus on the green element before, but it, it, it just seems empty when suddenly a trend comes up and everyone suddenly has 
an en- green agenda or a green engagement. That should be something that you as a company already knew and already had a strategic point or strategic approach to. So these trends, well, they, they, they will have an effect on CSR. And it might also be in the positive sense because trends also tend to like exemplify the second approach uh, of CSR where it is society driving this change. So there's no really hard regulation. We do demand disclosure. It does something with the enforceability, but and it turns to be compliant. It, comply explain or tick the box exercise but at least we do have csr engagement and that is what we want to know csr regulation is important when it comes to compliance because we force companies to disclose what they do and that is one of the most important things because if they don't disclose any information it will be hard to see if they comply So here the CSR regulation actually has great value when we talk about compliance, especially compliance in terms of things that have a social value and not just profitable gains. So let's just short compare the two. So we have CSR, which is an alignment of interests of owners and stakeholders with long-term best interest of society and compliance, which is strategizing, managing and mitigation, the alignment of core values to the behavior actions of an entity, depending on the external and internal risks and expectations. So you can see there's some elements here that are actually the same. Risk per se, the element of risk, is not a part of CSR. It is a part of compliance. So here compliance takes on the risk management part and like put together with some CSR alignment of core interest values to society. In the view, the perspective, both of them are internal, external. So there's a reason why I haven't put dynamic in in, as a definition in terms of the view of CSR because it depends on the drivers behind the engagement. So in terms of compliance, the drivers are based on the risk picture, the risk regulation and society. And of course, the core values, everything. Where CSR, the drivers might be, they they can be different. They can be from management, they can also be from society, but they can also just be a strategy of win-win situation. So because it's not clear and it depends who drives it and the incentive behind the drivers, because are they really voluntarily or is it just greenwashing? That is why I haven't put in the dynamic effect here, because it's simply not depending on the risk picture. So the approach, managing behavior according to some degree of philanthropic essence, creating social value on top of own profits, or despite of own profits. And in terms of compliance, that is strategizing and managing behavior according to ongoing dynamic risk assessment and risk-based approach to regulation. So there's some different things here because compliance is... Dynamic compliance is depending on risk and also that the social value, the social aim of the regulation also will be dependent on risk. So this whole risk element is not a part of CSR, it's a part of compliance. But we can say there are some overlaps between the whole process of trying to align interest of society with company interest or stakeholder interest. So... There are some similarities, which is very important. And the CSR regulation with disclosure and disclosing engagement actually makes it easier and more comprehensible for us to see if companies are compliant. So in that sense, CSR is good for compliance. So that was it. Stay tuned, subscribe to this channel and let's talk more about compliance.